introduction and the, uh, the stories that he shared with you regarding our, our lives as, uh, as Nishnabe people on this planet and uh, all that we have uh, encountered and all of you for, for, for uh, inviting me to this wonderful experience of um, being with you and understanding that you are, you are part, of, part of our dream, part of our vision for the, for the world to change the way of thinking. It is very difficult when you see the waters, uh, how they're being affected. And especially um, when, you, when we've walked around the lakes and we see the lakes, how they're, how they're being so polluted and they're, 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 the waters are going down. And the lakes are being, uh, you see a lot, more, uh, a lot more sand in the waters and a lot more rocks, they weren't, they weren't there before because of the, where is the water going? And we ask ourselves, where is this water going? Is it going to, uh, to the, up to the, uh, up in the sky world? Where is it going? And so when we think about how, how we as, as human beings, in, in how we, uh, how we look at things, we have to ask ourselves, what are we going to do about it? Much the same way as in, in the year 2000 when, uh, when the vision came, or the, the prophecy came from our Grand Chief Eddie Benton Benet, when he said to us, uh, to 30 years from now, an ounce of water is going to cost as much as an ounce of gold. That was in the year 2000, 30 years from now, is 2030. How far are we from the year 2030, when an ounce of water is going to cost as much as an ounce of gold? I carry a little bit, a little flask of gold dust, and I see that it's worth $450 uh, in today's today's cost. A little bit of sand. Can you imagine how much a little bit of that water is going to cost $450 in the year two, in the year 2030? And I think about that, and I think about the, the next generations of our people, not only not only the Nishabe people, but all of you. When you look at the, your generations, 2030, what are your children going to say? What are your grandchildren going to say? What did they? What did my my grandparents do to protect the waters? And that is um, every every lake that we walked was a reminder of our history of our people. Lake Superior was a, a memory of, a, of how powerful that water is. Water can be very powerful, can be deadly, can be very, uh, very dangerous, and can be very gentle, very kind at the same time. In the same way that women can be also very, very gentle, very kind, very, very nurturing, and yet very, very strong, very um, um, meaningful in what they say. And so I, I, I kind of look at Lake Superior as a woman, and I see her because she can be very powerful, can be very strong. She can be very uh, damaging, too, in the same way that uh, our, our waters can be. You know, you've heard of Lake Superior and how many boats have gone down when, the, when, they, when, the, when, they, uh, the, when she was threatened by, by other things, that she can be very, very hurtful. Lake Michigan was a, was a wonderful experience when we talked about uh, how, how our ancestors have left many signs for us to, to understand who we are as Nishnabe people. We saw rocks, we saw, we saw drawings on rocks, we saw pictographs and petroglyphs that we, reminders of our ancestors have thought of us, thought of us when, when, when they were, when they were uh, walk, walking, walking these, these trails in their moccasins that they must have thought about the next generations and left messages for us, that they cared about us. In the same way when we walk the, with the pail of water, we, uh, we walk that talk, in the same way that we are leaving that legacy, our children, our grandchildren, that we as, as Nishnabe people are thinking about our children. We go through any lengths to carry that water for them. And it's the same way that we, we carry that water with a pail, copper pail of water, that we carry that water to any lengths for, for, the, for the future of our children, our grandchildren. When we walk the Lake Huron, we are reminded of how, how we need our men to walk beside us. That for, for the two years that we walked, we were only had one, one young man walk with us. And at that time when, when we walked Lake Huron, there was men coming, coming with us, coming after us to help us with, carry the staff, eagle staff that we carried alone. 
after we talked to them about their role as, as caretakers of women, to, to walk beside the women, and not just to impregnate the women and walk away. They have a responsibility to be with them and help them in the work that we do as Nishnabekwe, as water carriers, we are carriers of life. That we have a special role in, the, in our work that we do as Nishnabek people, women. Women are carriers of life and that we, sometimes we see women who have five children alone and many fathers of that of that of the children that we have to understand that a man a man gives his seed to the to the to the woman and then walks away. Another another man comes and pregnants the seed, the seed to another woman the woman the same woman and walks away. How many how many unwed unwed mothers we see around this around our universe in our reserves these days that we we have to honor that honor ourselves as men and women that we have a responsibility for each other. And so that is the message that we got when we walked Lake Huron. And the men were just coming out and, and helping us walk walk with the waters. And it was very nice to see that. And so we, we understand that the water and the and the fire and the water have to work together. They they are in, in union with the, with our teachings about the fire and the water, the sun and the sun and the earth and the grandmother moon. There's many teachings there that we have to understand. In our teachings as Nishtabek people, there's many things that we we could spend a whole year talking to you about what, what we do, what we know as, as Nishtabek people. Lake, uh, Lake Huron, Lake Huron and then Lake Ontario, walk Lake Ontario, and that was where we knew that science science and, uh, and the Nishtabek way have to work together. We understood that Lake Ontario was very heavy at one point and that's when we, we hit from north, from New York, Ontario to New York after we crossed. The water became very heavy. And we, we don't know why we, our shoulders were really hurt because we had the same amount of water we carried. A year later, I, I got a, a, an article of a newspaper sent to me and the water is named heavy, was labeled heavy water by scientists because of the chemicals that were in that water. And so, and so science and Nishnabe people, we experienced that, we knew we knew the water was heavy, and it took a scientist to tell to tell people that it is heavy water, that it is love chemicals in that water, and so we uh, we need to work together with science and and Nishnabe people to to understand where we come from in terms of how we look at things, why we why we use the language in our cultures to understand life. The language is very important that we understand why why we're t it's taken away from us. Our language has been taken away from us. When you look at the maps, there's no no language in, the, in those maps. We have names for all those lakes, and we're, we're we're attempting to find the names of all those lakes. When you look at, I've done research on Lake Superior, and in an old old book, I found that it's it's named Chigamagami, Chigamagami, which is Chigama is a big a big boss. Agami is a lake, a big boss lake. That's what the Lake Superior is called, <laughs> and so. Uh, in the language, and so we're we're looking for other other names of lakes, and we have people doing research on those. And the original names of those lakes, Saint Lawrence River, for example, is not the name of Saint Lawrence. It was named after somebody Saint Saint Lawrence. I don't know why <coughs> why he was given the name. Why Saint Lawrence was given the name of that water? There's got to be a name for that. So we're looking for research in that. And so when we think about how. How our language and our culture needs to be inter intermingled with with the Nishnabe way and the in the and the academics and the scientists and the politicians. We all need to work together in the work that we need to do about the waters and the pollution and all all things that are happening to our our environments. Lake Erie, a beautiful little little lake, pitiful little lake that we see. It's really a um, it's really, I think it's going to be die, be dying because of all the, the, the S, uh, everything that's that's flowing into that little lake is poisonous. Mm -hmm. And every time we see that water, we we see it as very muddy, very very dirty. It looks like shit water. And and uh, I seem to wonder why why people you know still, still swim in that water. You know there, you know, I, and there's children swimming in that water and people, um, uh, with. You know, going into that water, it is. I think the lowest uh, level. I think there is a map there that shows the level. It's the lowest. Uh, it's it's beginning to to look like uh, a little uh, 
a little pond. It'll look like a little pond a few years from now if we don't do anything about it. And so when, when I think about the, the prophecy that was said by our Grand Chief, if we continue with our negligence, if we continue with our negligence, that was one of the words that he said to us that time. And he looked straight at, straight at us and he said, what are you going to do about it? And it seemed like he, would look, he was looking straight at me and asking, what are you going to do about it? And so when we look at the negligence that we are, we are imparting on our Mother the Earth and her, and her work with the water, we have to ask ourselves, what are we going to do about it? What can we do about it? And so hopeful, hopefully that we can convince, convince not only ourselves, but our children, our young children. And they're the ones that are very, very open to that. They're very resilient to, to just understand right away that the water is so precious. You don't have to tell them anything else. They know that the water is their, their, their lake. lake. Lake Michigan is their lake. Their lake Erie is their lake. They, they want to protect the Duke. So we we need to be telling them that we need to understand what, what that water is doing to, to us and what it will do to, to the next generations if, if we continue with our negligence. And so turning that around, if we discontinue our negligence, can you imagine how powerful we could be, how we could really open the hearts of, of the politicians, of the economists, of the, uh, uh, you know, the, the scientists, how we could really work together and really, really turn the turn the turn this thing, this uh, this issue of the waters, uh, taking away the waters. I know in our in our own way in the northern Ontario where I'm from, there is a way that we've we've tapped the water, and there's nothing. This is not something that I need to share with you today. But we we have ways of protecting the water and and tapping the water if we know how to do it. And you've seen the ceremony that we did yesterday with, with the water. There is ways that we can pray for the water. And I've looked at the water in that bowl there. It's starting to clear. The top is clearing up. And if you, and if you pray for that water, if you talk to the water, it will hear you. It will, it, will, it, will, it will feel you. It can sense what you're saying. And we've known that for many, many times, many years, many as a child, I knew that I knew that from you know from seeing that water, from being in the water, from living in that water, and being who I am as 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 an Ishtabek person. And not only that, I am uh, of the fish clan, which is the Wasisi, that I am of the fish clan. And I'm also born in February, which is the Pisces, the fish fish people. So intermingled with all of that, I'm very very in tune with the water. I can hear the water when it sings. I can hear it when it's sad, I can hear it when it's happy. So we need to open our hearts and our minds, not only up here, but down here too. We need to, to use both of our hearts and our minds to really understand what it is, where we're coming from, where we're going. And in order to know where we're going, we have to know where we came from. And we have to understand how, how things work, how, how evolving our thoughts could be, how evolving our minds could be, and our hearts and our minds can work together too to be together. St. Lawrence River was uh, another another beautiful river that we walked from from Ontario to uh, to the uh, uh, Riviere de Madeleine, where we, we were told the salt water meets the fresh water. And we knew that water was very, very beautiful in terms of how, how it can turn into something very, very strong also. As you see the the narrowing of the lake, it goes out like that, almost like an ocean after a while, and that it becomes salt. We kept tasting the water every once in a while when it would be getting saltier and saltier. And so we knew that, uh, that the intermingling of the salt water and the fresh water has, there is, there is a working there. It works in terms of the healing of the waters. And so when we, last year, when we walked at the waters, the, the ocean waters, we brought the ocean waters to the center of the, of where we started uh, Lake Superior. And it, and we are told it takes a year, 365 days or so for the water, from, from Lake Superior, a drop of water, that one, one drop of water, to go all the way down to all the lakes, down to St. Lawrence River, down to the ocean. I don't know who who did that, but the, that's, that's what, what we were told. So I, I need to maybe send a little drop of water in a, in a bottle and see how long it would take and label it and, and then try to catch it and it appear somewhere to, just to prove that, that it does take that long. 
But anyway, that's that's what we are told by our 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 our, uh, our ancestors, our old people. Our ancestors, our old people, talk to us in our dreams, in our visions, and so that is very important that our young people do go out, do out and fast. And I talk to them and I tell them, go out and sit on Mother Earth for two days, three days, four days, and listen to her. Sit on sit on her lap, and she will talk to you through the winds and the trees. She will talk to you through the thunders and the rain as it falls. Don't be afraid of it. And so our young people are very, very open to that. And all of you, and I, I look at you, and I look at all the gifts that you have, for you to go and sit on Mother Earth, if you can only do one day, do one day, 24 hours, no food, no water. Can you imagine how much, if you do it four times a year, four days, four nights, how much less food, food you would use, how much less water you would use, and you'd really appreciate that first drink of water that, that you're given after a fast. You really appreciate that first food that is given to you. How much less garbage you 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 generated, how much you know, how much less water you used. And so knowing that, I tell the young people, I tell them that knowing that you will begin to appreciate the water that you, you drink in the morning. And I mention to you every morning, I do that every morning. This morning I did that same thing I I lifted the water four times to the sky well, gave it to the water, gave the water to Mother Earth, and opened the window and I put some water out for her to, to have a drink before I took the drink, then went down for breakfast. And so we begin to understand how much that water is so precious to us, how how we all can work together and understand how how it can be very, very helpful to us in our dreams and our visions. And to wake up, to wake up to the uh, to the universe, wake up to to understand her as she is, and wake up to the to the elements of of our energies from from the universe. We are all of water, and I, I mentioned that yesterday. We came here. I didn't bring any water from Lake Sapphire, but I brought myself because I know I'm water, <laughs> and so I, I bring to you my myself as water, and I share with you as water, because we're all united by water. And so I, I, you know, that is my message to you is, is that we really need to work together so that we can intermingle with science, with ec economics, with the, with the politicians, that we can all be of one mind, one heart, that we can all work together to the betterment of our next generations. Because when you look at the waters and you look at it, it's going down so much, and that's only in, in five years, five years from now, that I walked, I walked on Lake, uh, Lake, the old woman lake, uh, five years ago, when I and I stood by the by the waters and I saw how, how that water is going down. Just five years, and then I, I look now again, how much it has gone down. It's only five years now. Can you imagine twenty years from now, thirty years from now, all these lakes? And you look at the lakes on on the map. How how little of that water is is going to be there, and our. I won't be alive then. I hope not to see the to see the atrocities that is happening. But your children will be seeing that. My grandchildren will be seeing that. My great grandchildren will be seeing that. And that I do not want to happen. I want it to be as pristine as I'm 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 standing here, as pristine as as the water is. <coughs> to leave it for my children. I'm sure you're all the same way too. You'd like to see the water the same way that it is now. You don't want to see it as little islands here and there cropping up, popping up here and there. And so I, I petition to you to take care of the water, love that water, respect the water, and just really, really care for that water. In all that you do every day, you know, pray for that water, lift that water to the spirit world and give thanks to, to, the, to the earth, to Mother Earth, to your grandmother, Grandmother Moon, who also, also has a responsibility of the waters on the world. She's the one who moves, moves the oceans waters and the earth. She's the one who, who also has a responsibility on Mother Earth. And so all the, the energies that are on, on the universe and in our, our Mother Earth has to be understood by us. And we can work together as Nishnabe people to, uh, to understand more where it is we come from, where it is in our language that we use, how we use our language, how we, we have not lost our language, many of us. And I'm happy to say that I haven't lost my language. And I really appreciate how, how when, I, when the ancestors come and speak to me about, about what I need to do and what I'm not doing right, 
they, they come to me and they, they tell me what to do and what not to do. Or if I've done some, something wrong, they'll come and... Some water? I don't <coughs> I have a bad cold. really dry. <coughs> so with that, I'll be quiet or shut up. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Grandmother Josephine. Um, thank you, Ron. Thank you, Maud. Um, we're going to transition to a new foundational paradigm. Frank, um, you're up. Um, let's again clap, clap for Ron, for the community, for Maude, for these visionary women who are, are carrying memory and carrying work and carrying responsibility um, for the waters. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um,